Hi everybody, it's Joe Krupp from FinSuite. In this video, we're covering the radio icon with a mouse click tap element trigger. We're going to be using a native Webflow form. Here you can see we have our native radio buttons. We have our native Webflow form and we are going to make a fancy radio button with a Lottie icon animation. Nice. And yes, this is actually selecting and unselecting radio buttons and not just for a visual touch. It's actually doing its job. The first thing we're going to do is jump into the HTML, make sure that we are all set up to properly check on and off a radio button. All right. As we saw before, we're using the native Webflow form. This is the native radio button. It is right from the assets panel. We need to make sure that the group name for all of the radios in our group to have the same name. Cool group, cool group, and cool group. Nice. Okay, inside the parent wrapper of the radio, we have our radio reel. Radio reel is the real radio button. It is the actual radio circle that is going to be on or off on form submission. This is super important because we're sending form data. We want the accurate and real form data to go through on the submission. We're not just doing this for a visual fun. So we're going to set this to display none. We're going to check it before we jump into interactions and on the displayed published site, we are going to set this to display none. We have our Lottie radio icon. This is what's doing all the fancy work. This is what is looking nice here. It's why we're doing this tutorial walkthrough. And probably the most important part is the radio label. This is what is triggering the Lottie icon animation and it's what's triggering the actual radio button, the radio reel to be selected or not selected. So. Let's see how we have this set up. Webflow is going to take this label click as a let's turn the radio on. So we're going to make sure that it is covering the entire size of the click target. And here it's set to absolute with a Z index nice and high. It can be one, it could be 99. Just make sure that it is above any text or Lottie icons or anything else within this radio parent. So we're absolute, we're full, we're expanding out into the entire size of this radio wrapper. Nice. Now, before we go into interactions, let's make sure that this is actually working. Very important. So let's go ahead and display block. Let's see it in action. Before we go on the published site, I'm going to show you it not working inside editor, inside designer preview. And you can see it, it kind of looks like something's happening to this, this radio button, but it's not clicking on. Why is this not happening inside preview? Don't know. It's a problem with preview. What we really care about is the published site. That's how people are going to be accessing this. And we're going to go and check on the published site to make sure that this is actually working. I'm going to go back over here and let's now click on option one, two, three. Great. And look what we got it. This is super reliable. We have not had one misfire, not even close. We're clicking multiple times. We're clicking through nice, nice, nice. And everything is perfect. As we click through on the radio icons, the Lottie icon animation is happening the same way that the real radio is happening. So perfect. We are ready to move on to interactions. This is exactly what we wanted to see. And please, if you're using any type of custom radios or check boxes like this, you have to do that check before you push the site live. All right, let's go in to interactions and we have an element trigger mouse click tap that is being used on our radio label. Let's jump in and see what's happening here on first click. We have our radio click applied 
On second click, we have nothing. It's important that we have nothing because we don't want to uncheck the radio on the second click. That's not what radios do. Radios only change when you click to another radio in the list. So let's go into our first click, radio click, and this could be a little confusing to first see. We have a timed animation, both are radio icon. I need to zoom out of my screen so I can see what's going on in here. Zero percent. So we want the Lottie icon animation to go to zero percent in 0.3 seconds. We also want the radio icon to go to 15 percent in 0.3 seconds. So this would appear that it's canceling itself out, but it's not because this one is applied to all elements with this class and this one is applied to only siblings with this class. Nice. So we are clicking on this radio label and we're going to shut off all of the radio icons, every single one, except for the sibling. And the sibling in this case would be our Lottie icon, our Lottie radio that we actually want to go to 15. So this is not something that's super obvious inside IX2. This is something that we do use on live sites and client sites. And it's something we just figured out through a lot of use of IX2. It's not something that we've seen out in the wild very often. So let's go through this. I'm actually gonna just create a new one and I'm gonna show you how we do this. So let's go and do the radio, select different items. And we are applying this interaction on this radio label. Let me move over here. We are going to be applying it on this radio label. It's the same label we had selected before. It's not the first one, it's the second one. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a timed animation on a different radio. So I have a different radio selected than the label sibling, right? We have this radio selected. It's not this one, it's not the direct sibling. It is in a different radio wrapper. And we're going to put a timed action on this. Whoops, on the radio icon, not the real. And we're going to apply a Lottie animation. It's going to be 0%, all elements with this class, wonderful. And by default, if I were to go and add another one, let's just add another one on this same icon. And I do this at 15%, they're both gonna be all elements, all elements, all elements. If I were to make this change to only siblings, it's going to change both of them. That's not what we want. We want one of them to remain all and one of them to be siblings. So in order to do that, let's go and delete the 15%. We're gonna keep the 0% and have it selected as all elements. Now we're going to go to the radio Lottie icon that is the same radio wrapper as our click target that we originally set the interaction to. That was this label right here on option two. We're going to select the same radio icon that is a sibling of it. And now we're going to add a timed animation with Lottie and only siblings. Nice. There we go. So this is going to remain all elements on the same Class, there's no add-on class here, the same class, we have one on only siblings, and this is going to do what we want. And let's actually go and start clicking around to see it actually working, and bam. And this is exactly what we want. Now, this is, in my eyes, a little bit sloppy. We want this to happen a little bit faster. The 0.5 is just a little too slow here for me. Uh, it's Since they're happening at the same time, we wanna make sure that this happens quickly. 
So let's jump into here. I'm going to set this to, let's say, 0.2. And let's go to 0.2. And if I now go and test, we're going to see this working quite nicely. Cool. So this is the brand new one that we just created. Let's also do a final test and make sure the real one is actually working. Please make sure you're always testing this. This is not something that you can just take for granted. Anytime we make any change to a custom checkbox or radio, we do this check. So I'm going to reload, make sure that we're using our new interaction. And bam, look at that reliability. Okay, so not only was this a radio button Lottie integration walkthrough, but this was, hey, where did this go? Okay, it's here. Not only was this a radio Lottie walkthrough, this was a look into some different ways to use IX2 and apply these different all elements and sibling elements with the same class. If you start using this throughout other functions, other, um, other animations, other movements, you're going to be able to do things that you didn't think were possible or things that needed add-on classes with IX2. That is how you integrate a radio icon with a Webflow native form on mouse click. That's effing sweet.